I did it. I finally managed to climb all the way to the summit of Mount Everest. The hardest to achieve item on my bucket list is now checked. I even braved the dead zone. My initial intention of climbing to the summit without using supplemental oxygen soon turned out to be a non-option. I assessed the long lines of climbers waiting way too long in the dead zone for their turn to start ascending to the summit and also for climbing down on the way back as an unnecessary and possibly fatal risk. I'm not new to high altitude climbing. In 2019, I climbed the Aconcagua, which is at 6,960 meters or 22,837 feet, not only the highest mountain in the Andes, but also the highest mountain outside Asia, and one of the seven summits of the seven continents. Still, the Himalayas and Mount Everest are a different class of their own. My Everest expedition started in April 2022 and lasted 63 days. Regardless of how well I prepared for this climb, there were moments when I felt like a small insect in all of those majestic mountains. My mind was busy with thoughts of giving up, followed by a mixture of desperation, fear, enormous joy, euphoria, and feeling very humble afterward. I've been told, the climb to the summit has an everlasting, profound impact on most Everest climbers' life. This is true, I survived to a whole new vision of life. With an altitude of 8,848 meters or 29,035 feet, Mount Everest is the highest point on our planet. The mountain is called Sagar Mata in Nepal, and Chomalunga in Tibet. More than 10,000 people have summited Mount Everest since Edmund Hillary and Tenzing Norgay made it to the top on May 29, 1953. The climb generally follows months of preparation, time spent acclimatizing to the low oxygen environment at high altitudes, and going on many shorter treks up the mountain from the base camp. Climbers face especially dangerous conditions on the ice fall of the glacier, called the Kumbu Ice Fall, and in the death zone above 7,925 meters or 26,000 feet. Climbing to the top of the world is rated with a difficulty level high. It contains steep terrain, that requires moderate climbing skills on ice, rock, and snow. You should put emphasis on walking with crampons. You will need experience with rope techniques, including rappelling and abseiling, as well as snow camping techniques. The required fitness level for a successful expedition to the summit, and all the way back is rated as very high. You will need an excellent level of fitness, and have an ongoing commitment to training, and maintaining fitness specific to climbing. Expect long days in extreme conditions. Preparation would include heavy pack carrying, specific conditioning through rock climbing, ice climbing, and also habitual cardiovascular exercise. An extremely important part of the preparation phase is safety precautions, and awareness of the dangers which you might face. Therefore I would suggest these seven points be rigorously followed. 1. Always have the decision power and last word on your safety because you can't count on anyone in a dangerous situation. 2. Respect the weather, and take weather conditions seriously. 3. Always use the ropes, pull at the ropes before clipping in. Check the screws and the ropes at all times. Don't climb together with large numbers of climbers on one rope. 4. Prevent dehydration, drink plenty. 5. Know your limitations, the knowledge of different situations at high altitude, and your reactions to them, is important for your self-confidence and essential for survival. 6. Seek knowledge before your climb especially about dealing with your supplemental oxygen in crisis situations. And last but not least, be on the lookout for avalanches, avoid climbs following heavy snowfalls. Don't climb the Kumbu Icefall too late in the day. Of all the obstacles to those ascending Mount Everest, the Kumbu Icefall is perhaps the most treacherous. The steep, craggy expanse of glacier, skids downhill at a rate of several feet per day, constantly heaving and shifting from the pull of gravity, and the pressure of its own immense weight. 
deep crevasses can appear overnight, and huge ice towers called Sarek's can splinter and fall at any moment, sending chunks the size of cars cascading downward. Mountaineers have christened the icefall's most notorious sections with names like Popcorn Field and the Ballroom of Death, and for years guides have eyed the path through them with unease. Each trip through the icefall is risky, because sooner or later any given serac is going to fall over without warning, and you can only hope you are not beneath it when it topple. Due to climate change, the ice is melting at unprecedented rates, and that greatly increases the risk to climbers. The breakdown in the Kumbu icefall is dramatic, especially at the upper icefall. Sherpas tell how they each day hear the groaning and crashing sounds of the glacier. The starting point of the south round to the summit is the South Everest Base Camp. The camp is located in Nepal, at an elevation of 5,335 meters, with a distance to the summit of around 20 kilometers or 12.5 miles. There are also four high camps between the South Base Camp and the summit. Located at altitudes of 6,100, 6,500, 7,400, and 8,000 meters respectively, they are quite basic facilities, where climbers have to pitch their tents, mostly on snow and ice. Getting hit by avalanches is an ever-existing danger when sleeping in the high camps. The fourth high camp, is located at the border of the dead zone. When you reach this camp after mastering the ice fall, and climbing along the incredibly beautiful Himalayan landscape, the summit will finally be in sight, and within your reach. The dead zone, broadly refers to the areas of Mount Everest with an altitude above 8,000 meters or 26,247 feet. Due to the lack of oxygen in the death zone, climbers' brains and lungs are starved for oxygen, their risk of heart attack and stroke is increased, and their judgment quickly becomes impaired. This zone is named so for a reason, since most deaths occur just before the last ascend to the summit, or during the descent on the way back. Nowadays, during rare periods of good weather, the peak often becomes so choked with climbers that people get stuck in the death zone for too long. As I was at the spot where the Hillary Step once stood, I counted nearly 90 climbers in front of me waiting in a long queue for their turn for the ascent to the summit. Due to that reason I had to spend quite a long time reaching the summit, enjoying the incredible view from the top of the world, controlling my mixture of emotions, and descending all the way back. Without breathing supplementary bottled oxygen, I would probably face serious difficulties. Contrary to the situation on the glacier, climate change has a positive effect on the dead zone. As the world becomes higher, the air pressure around Mount Everest is also increasing. The higher the air pressure, the more oxygen is there to breathe, even at Everest's summit. Climbing to the summit of Mount Everest is still the ultimate mountaineering adventure. Standing at the top of the world is one of life's most rewarding experiences. An attempt on Mount Everest is a committing undertaking that requires a huge amount of dedication and determination. If you are serious about achieving the top, and feel you have the right ingredients and experience, then you should definitely give it a try, or even a few tries, if environmental conditions prevent you to make it the first time. It is an undertaking well worth the effort, at least once in this lifetime.